Devotion 14, Hebrews chapter 8. Um, I trust that you are learning something and that God is speaking to you through our time together as well. Remember, we're asking three questions. What does it say about God? What does it say about humans? And what does it say to me personally? So I'm going to ask you to turn there. I've put the video on pause and go there quickly and um, then come back and read it with me. It again speaks about the high priest of a new covenant. Through the first number of chapters, the Lord Jesus is exalted as greater than the angels, as greater than Moses, as greater than a high priest, uh, any high priest that they have ever had. And um, he's, he's greater than Melchizedek or anybody in the order of the Levites. And it speaks again here about the high priest of a new covenant. Remember, the old covenant was, due to, was, was subjected to failure. It was imperfect. It was useless in a sense. And, and in verse 17 or verse 7 of chapter 8, it says, if, if there was nothing wrong with the old covenant, then there would not have been place for the new covenant. So in other words, there was something wrong. It was offered by an imperfect priest. And here we have a perfect priest. Whoever serves in this sanctuary, verse 2 says, the true tabernacle set up by the Lord. This is Jesus. You see the old tabernacle, the place of worship, although they followed careful instructions, according to verse 5, that Moses gave them to set up the sanctuary. Careful instructions. It had to be absolutely perfect. It was still made by man. But this tabernacle, is made by God himself, set up by God in absolute perfection. The Lord Jesus Christ, the perfect sacrifice for you and me. So the old pattern is completely replaced. And now we have a new covenant with a mediator far superior than the old one. And then it says yeah, under this new covenant, God brings us into a relationship with him. If you read from verse eight onwards and he says the old covenant, people did not remain faithful to him. They fell away as they did in Egypt. And then I put a new covenant and what he does. Here's something wonderful in verse 10 onwards in this new covenant. He actually writes his laws on our hearts. So we don't have to have a priest reminding us continuously, consistently about our sin and about our wrongdoing. We have the Holy Spirit that dwells in us, that continues to convict us and to correct us and to bring us back into a close relationship with God. He says, I will put my laws on their minds or in their minds. I will write it in their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. Then in this last verse, verse 12, he says, For I will forgive their wickedness and will remember their sins no more. That's the beauty of the new covenant. That as we come to the Lord Jesus Christ and say, I am sorry. As we come to the Father and we say, forgive me. That, that under the new covenant, God wipes it out. And Corrie ten Boom uh, said many, many years ago, God takes your sin that you confess and throws it into the deepest end of the sea and then says, no fishing. Don't go back there. It is dealt with by a perfect high priest, a perfect sacrifice, and therefore cleansed, washed completely by the blood of the Lamb. Thank you, Jesus. You are so superior to any any rule, any regulation, any person, any being that has ever been or will be our perfect high priest. We love you. We love you for that new covenant that you've brought us into. A perfect covenant that gives us peace and that allows God through his spirit to write his laws on our heart. May we be sensitive to the leading of the spirit day by day. Amen.